What's going on guys? It may not look like it, but this is another Vim tutorial. I decided to do this tutorial from inside of my Gen 2 box, just because it's been so popular on the channel lately. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about commands in Vim. Now, I've already briefly shown you guys a few different commands, but we never really did an in-depth discussion of commands in Vim. So Vim actually has an entirely different mode called command mode. You access it from normal mode by holding shift and pressing the semicolon button, which should be to the right of your L key if you're on a standard American keyboard. Now, after I do that, you see that this prompt opens at the bottom of the file where we have the colon and we can start typing in text. Well, this is our command mode. And if you type any of the valid commands that Vim has to offer, which is all of these here, then it's gonna go ahead and execute that command and do what it does. Now, I'm not gonna cover all of these commands in this video because obviously that would take quite a while, but I'm gonna go over some of the commands that I use most often when I'm using Vim. Now, we know a few commands already. We know the Q exclamation point, which is going to quit a file without saving. We know the tab new command, which is gonna open up a new tab. We know tab P to go back to the previous tab tab end to go to the next tab. When we have multiple tabs, we can do tab first to go to the very first, tab last to go to the very last one, Q exclamation point to quit a file, and then W to write to a file. And if we want to give the file a name, because as you can see, this one here is no name, it doesn't have a name, we can give it a name. And We'll give it the name George. So now this file has the name George. It's very happy to be a file with a name, but we're gonna quit out of it because we don't need it right now. So the first command that I'm gonna show you is the E command, which is going to allow you to edit a file that is in your current directory. Now with E, there's a few different things we can do. If we don't know the name of the file that we want to edit, we can actually hit tab and this is going to list all of the files that are currently inside of this directory. And we can also edit files from a different directory as well. So say if we don't want to edit in this directory, which I think is bash, we can just start typing in the name of the directory we want to edit. So let's do Etsy portage and then if I hit tab we see all of the files that are inside of my Etsy portage directory and let's go ahead and open up the make.conf and you see even though I didn't open up Vim in that directory I'm able to go ahead and edit my make.conf now keep in mind if you start Vim as a normal user like I have here and then you open up a file that you require root access to edit, like I have here, you're not actually gonna be able to make any edits to the file. So if I try to enter insert mode, Vim's gonna yell at me by telling me it's a read-only file down here. Um, I've also edited my VimRC to tell me that it's read-only as well here. But if I try to change anything and write to the file, it's gonna tell me add exclamation point to override. Well, even if I do that, it's not actually gonna work because I don't have the proper permissions to edit the file. I have a video on my channel about file permissions in Linux. If you're interested in learning more about that, it's a good watch. So let's go ahead and just quit out of that for now. The next command that I'm gonna show you is the CD command. Now, CD is just going to show us a string value for the current directory that we're in. So if I enter that in, you see down here that we are in the directory home Kenny. The next command I'm gonna show you is the put command. And this is one that I use quite a bit. 
It allows you to generate a list of numbers below your current cursor position. So I think we've all been there where we need to create a list of numbers and people have different ways of doing it. Maybe you open up an Excel file and you just drag the cursor down to create it that way, but I guarantee it's not gonna be as fast as this, especially once you get used to using this. <coughs> so the syntax is put equals range, and then we'll do a parenthesis and we'll add the start value. So this is gonna be the first number that you want to add. We'll just do one in this case. Add a comma and then add your ending number, which will be the last one that you want to add. And then close off the parentheses and bam, it created a list of numbers, one through 25 below the cursor position. We can also add a jump to put as well. So a jump is basically when you want to jump over particular number values, say if you wanted to do every other number or every third number, you could just add that to the jump value. So let's create a list of numbers again, one through 25, but let's skip over all the even numbers. So put equals range one, 25, and two. So two is going to do every other number. And since we started off with an odd number, this is only going to print out odd numbers. And that is exactly what it did. Now we can also combine put with a for loop in order to create numbers that are both static and dynamic. So one instance where I commonly do that is whenever I need to create a list of IP addresses. So the syntax for doing that, let's say I want to create this entire IP range 192.168.0.0 through 192.168.0.255. I'll do for I in range 0.255. Now, if you've done any programming before, you probably know that the for loop is going to iterate through all these numbers, zero through 255, and on each iteration, i is going to take the value of whichever number we are currently on. And then we're gonna pipe that into put equals 192.168.0, quote, I. And so for each value in this for loop, we're going to put this text here, which is going to be static, and then I is going to have the value for whichever number it's currently at in the for loop. And then we're going to end for, and this has indeed created every single IP address in that range. Let's do page up just to get through this a little bit faster. So you see it's all the way here, 192.168.0.0 through 255. Fastest way that I know of to create a list of IP addresses. Another, another command that I don't really use too often, but it's an interesting command nonetheless, is to flip the order of all of the text that is in your document. So. This will basically make line one become the last line and the last line become line one, so on and so forth. It's just G forward slash caret forward slash M, lowercase m I mean, zero. And you see it flips the order of all of the text in the document. Like I said, I don't use that too often, but it's just interesting how a few characters can do all of that. It kind of shows off the raw power of Vim's command mode. Another command that I actually do use pretty often is the registers command. And what this does is show us all the text that is in all of the different registers in Vim. Now, I think I've touched on registers in one of my previous Vim videos, but I'll give a brief explanation. So in other text editors, you know you have a clipboard. You can do control C to copy to the clipboard and control V to paste from that clipboard. 
Well, Vim has a clipboard as well. In fact, it has many, many different clipboards. And in Vim, we don't call them clipboards. We call them registers. And you have a register for, I believe, every single key that's on your keyboard, or at least all the alphanumeric keys, plus um, the plus, and I know the ampersand, I mean, not the ampersand, the asterisk is another clipboard as well. So that's a total of, I think, about 40 different clipboards. And obviously it can be difficult to keep track of those when you're yanking text into different clipboards. So the registers command just helps you to see what is in each of the registers. That way you can use them much more effectively. The old files command is going to show you the files that you have recently edited with Vim. So if you use Vim exclusively as your editor, maybe you were editing a file earlier in the day and then you want to go back to it, but you don't remember what that actual file was. Well, you can just do the old files command. And not only does it show you the files, but it actually gives you the full directory as well. So these are all of the files that I've had open recently in the most recent order. Of course, any file that you open that doesn't have a name isn't going to show up in the old files. And we can also browse old files. Now, keep in mind, this is going to open in place of your current document. So if you don't want to you know, have this document go away, then you want to do tab new first. And then we can do browse old files. And what it's going to have us do is type in a number for the file that we want to edit. So let's go ahead and edit gunstore.sh. And it goes right on ahead and opens up that file for us. So let's quit out of this. And all of these commands are sort of the same. They at least do the same thing, but they just do it in a slightly different way. So these are modifiers of the command explore, which opens up a file explorer. But you can change the way that this file explorer opens. So if we do s explore, what this is going to do is open up the file explorer in a horizontal view. So we still have the file open here, but down here is actually a file explorer where I can go ahead and open up a new document. We can also do Vexplor to do it with a vertical window, uh, V-E-X-P-L-O-R-E. -E. So if you'd rather do it in this view, but the view that I prefer is Textplore because what this will do is actually open up a new tab and then allow you to find the file. And this way, when you find the file that you want to edit, you can go ahead and open it with enter and it's not going to take the place of the file that you were editing before. All right, guys, so these are some commands that I use in Vim. I hope that you'll find these commands useful as well. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like on it and share it with someone else who you think would find it helpful as well.